Today's video, I'm gonna tell you what you need to do if you're thinking of having an electric vehicle battery or an electric vehicle charger installed in a place that it's not too easy to put. So if it's a basic install and your, your socket's there and your power's there, great. But if you have something like me, which requires a little bit of groundwork or putting some cables long distance down your house, then watch today's video because like you, I have an electric vehicle charger at the end of my garden that had a supply put in that's not big enough for my future needs of planning. Now I'm about to pave my entire garden so it's all being dug up and once the path goes down for the new garden, I don't want to dig up my garden in two, three years when I decide I want a battery. So I'm doing the forward work now. So if you're thinking of having an electric vehicle battery, another electric vehicle charger, and you have a slightly complicated install, then watch today's video. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to fit to forward plan what you may need. Now my situation may be different to yours, but you can tailor what my situation is slightly to your situation. This is just to give you the information on what you need if you're thinking of forward planning and building something for your house to have an electric car charger and a battery. Now I'm wanting to put my battery over there in my garage. There's not enough room in the house. I don't want it externally and I don't want it internally on display. So it's gonna go in the garage and that is where my car is parked over there in front of the garage and also I can also park a car in the garage. So the long-term plan is to have two electric vehicle chargers in there and possibly a grid storage battery, which this is not, I'm gonna have it yet, but I'm forward planning and this is the stuff that I'll need to put in to make it work. Now my current ampage into the garage is 40 amps. Now 40 amps is clearly not enough for two car chargers and it's clearly not enough for one car charger and an electric battery to be charged at. So I'm going to be beefing up the supply to the garage. I'm not going to use the existing supply because that runs through internally into the house. I'm going to beef a new connection into there and into there. What I'll be doing is fitting a completely new armoured cable all the way from my main electricity supply where my meter is. I'll be splitting the tails with Henley blocks and then running that new 100 amp, I'm going to feed basically the whole connection what comes into the house, a full 100 amp supply straight into the garage and that 100 amp supply straight into the garage will then be able to easily manage all the load for battery and also two electric vehicle chargers. Yes, there is only 100 amp to my total house and I'm bringing 100 amp to my whole garage, but the way electricity works is you're never going to be using the full 100 amp all at one time. Forward planning, maybe I should also put in a free phase supplies, but I'm not gonna be paying for free phase supply anytime soon. And I have very, very little electricity, sort of high intensity devices inside the house. I do have an electric oven, which I don't tend to use too much, but most of the chargers these days come with low balancing and we can get around to that in a minute. There also is something I'm gonna put into the garage, which is specifically to me, which won't benefit you, but it will benefit you in terms of videos, which is a little bit of a treat, which I'll tell you about as I get further into this video and maybe I'll show you when I finally got it installed. So the first thing first, if you're gonna be doing groundwork like I am, is you need to dig a trench which is deep enough for electricity. You need to obviously make sure you've got the right gauge cable, cover it into this sort of special caution tape that says there's electric there. Then a little bit of sort of, sort of stuff that you can do is put sand over it first to let people, you know, let they know that they're hitting something different. And then you put another piece of tape over the top of that to then let them know that there's electricity underground. So if someone tries to dig it, A, it's armoured, so it should be pretty safe, but they've got a couple of warnings before they hit the cable and actually cause themselves harm. The cable has to be dug pretty deep under here. Um, we've not finished digging the trench, as you can see. There's still some more digging today. So we're gonna get the digging done, get some more trench laid down here so we can put some more cable. Now, because I'm also having an electric battery put in and I also wanna be forward thinking about other things, I'll be also putting some ducting in. Now, the ducting is for the battery and also possibility for some other stuff on the chargers. The most important things that you need to do when specking for your charger or battery is just basically make sure you have enough capacity there in ampage. So if you're only fitting one charger, then really one charger is about 40 amps. If you're planning on doing two chargers, then you need about 80 amps. And if you're planning on doing an electric car charger as well, bear in mind that they're all, all gonna be running at the same time. You might need 80, 90 amps. Now, there is a case that you may need free phase if you're going to be charging all these at the same time and you have a lot of appliances. 
because you could overwhelm your main amp fuse to your house. However, most people, especially EV drivers, tend to charge on overnight on tariffs like Octopus Agile, Octopus Go. By the way, there's a link down below if you're thinking of joining Octopus, get 50 quid if you sign up with my code. But yes, you can basically shift your load to different times and that should stop the grid from over being overwhelmed, etc. And the idea of the grid storage battery is to alleviate some of that load as well from other times rather than taking it from the grid, it'll be coming from the battery. Now I've not got any money at all to buy a grid battery at all, but like I said, I don't really want to be reading up the garden. So I rang up someone who does test uh, power walls, I rang someone who, who does power vault batteries, and I rang a couple of others and basically found out what specs you need for their batteries to go in. First of all, it's completely fine going in there. The battery, you know, vehicle to grid batteries will charge up through the same cable as well as discharge through the same cable. It's quite happily going through a Henley block. As long as it's separated after the meter, your power will go back into your house if your house needs power. For the Tesla power wall, as people may know, Tesla power walls are able to operate completely off the grid. If there's a power cut, they will keep the power on. And to do that, they have what they call the Tesla gateway. And the Tesla gateway is a little device that is placed near your meter, basically where your incoming supply is, that can disconnect you from the grid if there's a power cut. So basically your power wall doesn't force power back into the grid as the person on the grid's working on it. So it basically detects no power from the grid, disconnects it from the grid and makes it safe. However, because it's connected right near the grid, basically right near the meter supply comes in, and my battery's gonna be in my garage on the other side of my garden, they need to be able to communicate. So they do this using a communication cable. The Tesla spec is two pairs shielded of twisted pairs. Now, you can use CAT6 for this, so shielded CAT6 cable, and just join the two pairs up to the two oranges, the two blues. That'll be more than sufficient. What I'm going to be doing is I can't, at the time of recording this video, because we're in the middle of lockdown, get hold of any shielded, jelly-filled cable. Now, the reason it has to be jelly-filled for me is it's because it's going underground. If you weren't going underground, it was just being taped around the outside of your building, or across your garden fence then you won't need a jelly filled cable but if it's going in the ground it needs to be jelly filled so it doesn't fill up with water and damage it so i'm going to put non-jelly filled cable in i'm putting two cables in um they're both like i said they're both not shielded now in theory i'm not going to run them directly in the side of the power cables so it shouldn't need to be shielded for any interference because they're not going to be touching the power cables that's why tesla asked for that spec so in theory it should work fine now, because these cables can also, they're, they're not armored, they can get damaged, I'm running it in a ducting, which is that ducting that you can see all across my floor at the moment being assembled. Now that ducting will carry, I'm going to send two CAT6 cables down. Now the reason I'm sending two CAT6 cables, one is for Tesla and two is for redundancy. And also, if I get a Zappi or another battery, which is not a Tesla battery, that is also, those those cat sixes not only can be used for data transfer, but can also be used for something like say a CT clamp on, on the Zappi, for example. So this allows me to have a little bit more versatility. And it also, I could connect a network connection to the garage at a later point. It just allows me some versatility. Now I'm, I'm gonna, of course, leave through a draw rope in that ducting. So in that ducting, I'm gonna leave a permanent piece of rope that's gonna go all the way from where my power comes in to my garage and that's going to be run under there and it's a very very thick pipe it's basically a drain pipe that i've stuck together and because i'm running this piece of rope through it if i do need to pull a shielded cable through it means i don't have to dig up my entire garden to do so i can just pull it through the other advantage is let's say i do decide to go three phase in another three or four or five years um, it, you know, I, maybe I have to because I've got rid of my gas boiler and I've replaced it for a air source heat pump because it keeps turning on every second I'm trying to film this for you. Um, and basically I've had enough and I've, I've smashed it to pieces at the end of this video. Well, maybe I need to go free phase power for that. And this ducting with this uh, basically draw cord I'm gonna leave through will allow me to eventually do that in the future. Now I am I'm not planning on going free phase, but if I do, 
I've done it, I don't have to dig up my garden, it saves me a lot of heartache and aggro in the future, and I am planning to stay in this house for the rest of my life. So it could change in 15 years. So it's nice to plan ahead. It's very, very cheap to just put a rope through it. It's just basically drain pipe, which is also, again, very, very cheap. It's a lot cheaper than, say, digging up your garden, which is the main cost. Once I've got that connection in there, I'm gonna have a new fuse board in there. Again, the fuse board will have an extra four spares on it compared to what it, what it will need. So I'm gonna have two electric car chargers spares there i'm gonna have the battery spare there i'm gonna have uh, two outdoor lightings on there and then i'm also going to just like i said to have basically four completely blank sockets on there that aren't being used for anything and the reason for that is redundancy you never know what i may need to wire up in there in the future now technically redundancy i really probably shouldn't think about it too much because if i do go free phase i'll need a whole new board in there again but i might need I don't know, extra circuits in there, extra plug sockets in there, maybe even a garage door opener or something like that. You don't know. And for the relatively small cost of upgrading the fuse board to a bigger fuse board, it's not really worth arguing over. So I, I am all about belt and braces and redundancies. And yes, you're gonna say, why not just install a bigger connection or a proper ducting at the time of putting the charger in there in the first place? Well, that wasn't my choice. When I bought this house, the builder I bought it off, told me the biggest connection they could put to the garage was 40 amps and not knowing much about electricity and amperage and etc. I just took the word for it, which was a completely not a stupid thing I should have done because I was paying for it. So I actually ended up paying twice for it. But yeah, redundancy, putting that ducting in is gonna be the long-term solution for me. Now I did say there's something very special that I am gonna put in the garage, which will enable some videos will also be quite unique to basically any YouTuber. And that is, I am fitting two chargers, kind of. I'm keeping my main Omi charger because it allows me to basically react to Agile and save money. But I am also gonna be fitting a second plug in there for a charger. And that second plug, I'm gonna fit on a commando socket. And the reason I'm gonna fit it on a commando socket is I often get offered free chargers by companies wanting to sell their chargers and I've always turned it down because I can't be bothered wiring it up but having a commando socket will mean I can just screw a commando socket at the end of their electrical connection and plug it into a commando socket and test it. Testing this will allow me to do more tests for YouTube to do more content I'll be able to test more chargers. All the companies who send me chargers I'll be able to test them, review them and give them a proper sort of airtime and a review for people like you. I mean, ever since I did which electric vehicle charger do you need, which is one of my most popular videos on YouTube at the moment, it, people just keep wanting to send me charges and want more reviews on charges and how charges work. If you're one of those people, which charger would you like to see me review? Which charger are you thinking of buying? Have you seen that video of mine? Do you want to help support my channel? Then check out Patreon. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you again next week. And if you want an update of what happens to this when I've finished it, then let me know and I'll post some pictures up and I'll maybe even make a video on it. Thanks very much. And I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.